you know, it's just kind of upsetting when you think, when you join a, an organization such as that, the whole plan of extending the contracts is the fact that the core has proved time and time again, no matter what fifth they have, you know, their top 30 potential is consistent when everyone's actually trying their hardest and, you know, trying to do everything correctly. Um, you learn what works, what doesn't work very fast. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back into another interview. Today, I'm going to be joined by Thomas of Endpoint, of course. It's uh, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much for organizing this. It was pretty quick, you know, dropped you a message yesterday and here we are today. So appreciate you coming on. No problem. Yeah, indeed. All right. So uh, kicking things off, kind of set you up a little bit beforehand and, and whatnot. I think it'd be interesting to get a bit more of a um, maybe vocal look into how things went at Envy for you, in your opinion, and how things ended there. Um, obviously, I think it's it's no secret, really, that it was just a, a little strange, right? And if the Flashpoint promise, obviously, that, you know, was a bit shaky, I suppose, because of COVID. Um, but then from there, it seemed you guys were, were kind of locked in a little bit and not doing an awful lot of anything. Um, how How did it feel for you, you know, once maybe you're a few months in and it felt like, you know, there was the odd tournament, but not an awful lot of uh, of showing yourself off. Um, obviously, um, it's it's pretty upsetting when you actually think about it because you know I went from Endpoint, who were like we were playing really good at the time. We went through a few issues, but um, you know we were playing a lot. We went. I went from playing, you know, two hundred two hundred odd maps in six months to having to play 14 in another six months yeah. so you can see like the massive difference and you know the small amount of games were obviously really important you know we didn't have any experience together getting the opportunity to like fix stuff you know it was just like all right we're going to play this tournament and you're just going to go straight onto the player break once you finish it and it's just like it it's a bit weird because people don't actually like what you expect from a team is to be playing in all other types of tournaments, you know, fixing problems and then developing the team. But we just weren't able to really do that. Mm. And, you know, obviously it, it caused the team plenty of problems in and out of the team. But it just felt like after maybe a week and a week and a half that the team was already in this decline where some people didn't want to play uh or if they did want to play it wasn't really like shown i think out of all of the players i'd probably say like michu had the best work ethic right to be honest um but you know the team practically died about a week and a half later after i joined like yes we continued to practice but um like I felt really bad, you know. I I tried to speak to the MV or like you know the organization, like Hashtro. Like I I brought these problems forward uh, as soon as I joined, and it was more like on the basis of all right, look, we're gonna rebuild. Hashtro did that tweet saying we're gonna buy some tier one players and like build it around some new people, and you know I was originally told you know I'd be remaining with that team. And, um, you know, I, to be honest, it's just, it just went, it just went belly up towards the uh, end. You know, Envy didn't really know what they're doing. They've got to obviously to speak to their investors. Would I have personally invested into that team? No, because I think that from the outside, there were a lot of problems. But when I was joining, there was a lot of, uh, promise about change in the core of the line lineup, uh, not only in that, but you know, a whole sort of directional tra- like change, and it just never came about. Mm. Yeah, an awful, an awful lot of mess. I think even from the outside, I guess that could be seen, but it's it's definitely interesting to get a bit of an insight that you know, um, it felt like that when you got there. Essentially, you know what I mean. Like you, you get a little bit settled in, learn everyone's names, and and maybe the basic like positions that you're going to be playing and then it just 
didn't really uh, go anywhere from there. What what was the shift like though? Kind of, you know, physically you go from playing so much Counter Strike to not playing an awful lot. Like, was there a time that you were like, okay, sure, it's nice, it's it's a nice organization, and from you know a, a financial aspect, it's a little cushy, a little comfortable, but you wanna. I would assume be competing and, and improving and showing what you have. So, you know, was that something that you were like the, the free agency, the benching, that kind of, you know, being listed, whatever you want to call it. Um, was that a relief in the end by the sounds of things? Um, somewhat because I wouldn't have been able to like reconnect with the endpoint guys. Like we've, we've done really well. Like we recently had, we we're playing with Will. We've made 22nd in the world. We could have, made much further but unfortunately other things happen with that but to be honest with the envy thing i kind of feel like i kind of feel like uh the whole thing was like just a robbery in my opinion like i feel like i was robbed of an opportunity to play in an organization as su such as envy because i think they they are an unbelievably good organization mm -hmm. and i think that they have so many opportunities to help and develop a team and if they, it, like, in theory, if I continued with them, I, I would imagine if the team had the right changes, we would have done really well. Like, at, at Flashpoint, I think that we were a couple of rounds from beating big. We were a couple of rounds from, you know, getting to a potential semifinals. And, um, you know, it's just kind of upsetting when you think, when you join a, an organization such as that. And basically have all of the sort of ambition crushed in the first couple of weeks because you could tell like everyone else out from outside that you know the team's at the point where it's just the end and uh you know the promises that were given weren't didn't remain so you know the opportunity just was never there for the team to develop we, we played 14 maps in six months yeah you know, it just, I, I don't really know how to uh, describe the letdown in that situation. Yeah, it's it's very, very curious. Um, like I say, I think COVID has definitely hit and perhaps alongside the likes of like Mad Lions, you could say one of, one of the orgs that was hit pretty hard, but then at the same time, it just felt like there was a total mismanagement of the whole situation and, and trying to pick it up because i feel they definitely would have had you know the the facilities to let you guys compete over in eu and and give that a go but um just never really considered that for whatever reason or, or you know it's strange it's very very strange um i wanted to move a little bit further kind of you know still towards that envy uh area but looking at two of the names uh calyx and, and mihu michu um and where they're at at the moment um how was your time playing with them you know what what do you feel you've just mentioned like me who with his super hard working ethic but what do you feel those guys are capable of i think meech is a unbelievably skilled rifler i think he needs to be around the right people to uh to perform well but he definitely like thrives under pressure he's definitely a very talented player and a you know has a lot of raw skill I just think that I, I've always thought that, you know, that somebody like Michu would be a type of player who would make a Polish team tier mm. one. He, he, I just think that he is just that type of player. Personally, I feel like he would thrive in a Polish team like he did before. Uh, I think there's a tiny bit of language barrier, but, you know, he, is imp he has improved a lot. And, you know, he's an insane player. In regards to Calix, I think, you know, Calix is also somebody who's insanely skilled. And, you know, he's got a wealth of experience playing in massive tournaments. I just think that he he kind of gets scared in a lot of situations, as in, like, he doesn't want to give away his kill, even though he might have to. He plays a bit more safe to, like, save himself in some situations but he's also like somebody who will bail you out of big rounds you know and he will help you absolutely smash teams like he, if he goes off on one he'll win you a game single-handedly almost he'll have like that much impact mm. but 
but you know it, in his new team and eternal flames i think they're called right uh fire i think eternal fire oh, internal fire yeah yeah i think he'll do really good there i think you know him linking up with like zantara's Woxic. i definitely think that they'll have a, a lot of opportunity to you know break into the tier one i do think that team's going to be scary to play against okay all right well there you go um so yeah, bringing it a bit more current then, you know, you move back to, to Endpoint um, after a bit of time in Limbo. Uh, how is that? Is it kind of, you know, you walk in and right, you know where you're going, you know what's happening, you've got all the same stuff or obviously there'd been a little bit of a shift there. Um, did they change up some of the positions, some of the roles that you had to play? Um, yeah, so when I joined back, I got shifted from all of my old roles into new sort of anchor roles. I got put into more of an anchor style player. Right. Um, somebody who can get multi kills in anchor roles, which uh, Ross thought I was going to be really good at. I think I've done decently there, but it's not my natural position anyways. Um, but yeah, it's it's been refreshing because, you know, I probably played when I was benched in Envy more than I did in Envy, right. which is kind of hysterical, yeah. considering I probably played more maps in what, like, in, in under 30 days than I did in six months with them. Honestly. So, but yeah, um, we definitely, like, you know, the guys are great. You know, Crucial, Surreal, Max, Ross. And at the time, like, I got to play a bit of Robin. You know, I, I have a good good relationship with all of them and you know i just slotted back in helped them out when when uh, the flames deal was going through with og when they needed somebody i was able to be there and you know help them out get some wins and some tournaments and stuff yeah that was... yeah really uh, appreciated the opportunity to you know join back yeah how how um important is the chemistry do you feel right because you go from an environment where you've not played too much and um i i think there's you, you know a, a few uh no love lost let's say with some of the players and and whatnot on the envy side um going into an environment where you already had a little bit of a connection then you can very quickly make a connection with you know some of those players that maybe you've not played with as much um do you think having that chemistry is important or would you rather play in a team where every role has been you know meticulously figured out and they've got the perfect person for it like what would you uh, say is is a better choice i think for longevity you've got to have people who can obviously you know enjoy each other's company like i think an endpoint yes we may have uh disagree we start to play and stuff but in the end of the day like we're all friends we can speak to each other you know really calmly about stuff you know it's nothing's taken personal i think that in a lot of teams, such as like Envy, it was more like a nine to five, like I turn up and I go and, yeah. you know, longevity wise, that's, it's, it's awful because I don't think any team just comes on nine to five and they can just bang and go off before disbanding after a while. So I think that the sort of uh, team environment Endpoint has built uh, and, you know, I've luckily been a part of it has been really good to, uh, you know, not only develop players such as like Flames, uh, we're now developing uh, Boros, um, and you know, Will, uh, Mezzi, you know, he slotted straight into us. You know, it's a really good environment for people to take part in, and then we are a very welcoming team. Uh, I think that you know, Ross has really pushed us down that sort of road, and we're a very community based team as in like our own little personal community. Right. So yeah, I think it's I think it's really important and yeah, I'm really happy for the opportunity to play in it. Yeah, and I mean, uh before we move on to sort of talking more results wise and stuff like that, you guys have, have very recently uh the four of you kind of the the core four as it were um signed on for another 2 years. So that's everyone apart from Boris right at the moment who obviously has only just joined the team so it seems a bit silly to extend his contract. Um talk to me about that, you know, what's some of the thinking behind that uh, this project? I think you all uh having done a bit of interviewing post game and stuff like that with some of the guys um believe in the project and you know trying to figure things out. Ross uh uh is obviously quite a big part of that and seems to be taking uh a more 
bird's eye view kind of role if that makes sense you know and trying to build something for the long term so tell me about this uh this contract extension um well me max joey and surreal we all got signed for uh, we extended our contracts for another two years mm -hmm. um basically ross is going to take a more general manager sort of role and but it's not like he's not going to have nothing to do with the team. He's still going to be communicating, having that, like, uh, you know, good vibe in the team. Uh, you know, he, he loves, you know, hanging around us, chatting with us, you know, also contributing. I think it's really important for the team to also have that uh, sort of opportunity to use him. I just think that, you know, the the whole plan of, extending the contracts is the fact that the core has proved time and time again no matter what fifth they have you know their top 30 potential is consistent you know like some teams they'll drop out a lot endpoint have been very consistent and at holding that ground even though they'll lose plays such as flames losing them to like og we've just lost mezzi to uh fanatic and we're still able to like sit in the top 30 it's a very I think it's a very good basis to build upon. And I think it's very rare in a lot of organizations because, you know, some small changes may shift the entire team atmosphere, their entire way of their, their style of game. And, you know, we don't really have that. We sort of adapt really well to having uh, sort of new adventures with new people. So, yeah, I think it's it's probably, well, I, I personally believe that it's a, it's a good sort of endeavor by endpoint for security long term mm. yeah yeah so um what what about this kind of uh moving around then because i guess you have a perspective from both sides as it were having come back into the team to fill in that slot uh and now a few months later having seen someone leave and trying to accommodate a new player um how as a player, I'm sure it's not the first time that you've done that in your career, just sort of a, a general question, I suppose, with this one. How do you go about accommodating a newer person into the team? Um, and maybe, you know, do you draw on some experience of, of being accommodated yourself, if that makes sense? Yeah, so uh, I, I've, I, like, previously before I left Endpoint, I was the person being accommodated, so that's probably why I had very pretty good statistics, mm. you know, with the games. Um, I think the way we all look at it, as in all the players, is that each individual that joins, you know, we have to alter the way we play specifically for them, because players like Mezzi and Flames, they're complete polar opposites. So I think what we're going to, and even Boros now, so we're now starting the process of basically dismantling everything we had with Mezzi which suited him, which helped us get results to help him also play insanely well, to then having and facilitating Boros and pushing a more directional way for him to perform with us, to make everything comfortable as soon as possible. Like, these processes can take, you know, time, but, like, once we get, once we hit that barrier where we're like, all right, this is, like, really working now, then we can, like, jump and improve it, improve it, improve it. So we can start beating the better teams again and you know we take it in a very professional way and you know you, i think the evidence is there from players who have played with endpoint like once that process starts working players like flames just start appearing and then they get all the like you know starlight you know over over all the, all the light shown on them and they get all the uh, sort of social media sort of looking at them yeah and uh you know the same happened to with mezzi you know he played very average in uh c9 i don't really think they played the right style but you know we we slotted him in and you know he became a star in my opinion he's an unbelievable player an unbelievable like work ethic i just think that i just hope that you know he, he does really well in fanatic honestly uh, you know he's a great person easily probably one of the best ever uk players maybe even be best because he's a rifler right yeah yeah i mean I, you know you hear good things obviously uh as we're kind of recording the 
uh, Alex article that he's an IGL's dream and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I think they look decent. They face off against Na'Vi, obviously, in their, their first game of Pro League here, going down 2-0, but I believe bringing it close um, against... Yeah, it went to a double overtime, actually, looking at the result on, on uh, overpass. So that's pretty nasty, you know what I mean? I think that that's fair um, from, from Fnatic, and uh, I do feel it's some of the uh, older members that perhaps are going to be more of an issue, especially for, you know, Alex IG yelling around them kind of thing. Um, rather than Mezzi himself, but obviously time will tell uh, with that one. Let's let's talk a little bit about the the way that you guys have been performing, though. Obviously, you have um, had this really solid run before the player break, before the the loss of Mezzi. Um, but I mean, I would I would say honestly, like uh, obviously there is this period of adjustment, um, but you've not really lost too many places and still looking pretty good. Uh, I would say, I mean. How do you feel things are going in the sort of post mezzi era? I think there's a lot of adjustment at the moment. So so because Boros and Mezzi are polar different like polar opposite players, right. you know, it's it's really hard to look at it because you know, we we got him towards the end of the player break and we were just finishing our player break and we're going straight into tournaments. And it's like we haven't had much time to prepare. And even the time we've had is basically introductions almost. Um, but now we're getting to the stage where we're like, all right, look, we've got to really pull our finger out because, you know, a lot of these tournaments are really important. And I think that we're still very in this medi sort of um, medi world where our style is centered around him, you know, and the team sort of met meta is set around him and we don't have him anymore right. so like the alterations we've made on different maps so far are starting to like work and i think boris is becoming much more confident now you know it's, it's all about making sure that everyone's on the same page and when we lose somebody as impactful and uh you know as 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 good as messy um it's really hard to adjust in that like early period but I think once we get over that little barrier, I think we're going to be fine. You know, I think uh, the opportunity is going to be reached by us. I think the performances will come as well. I think Boris is an insanely skilled kid. I just think he needs, uh, he needs to be on the same page. And also the players, such as like me, Surreal, Crucial, Max, we all need to be on the same page for everything to work properly because that's how Max likes to structure our team. And I think at the moment, some on some maps, we're a bit disjointed right. because, you know, it's such a big shift and change. But I think it's coming, and I think, you know, in a couple of weeks, we'll be back to back to where we were with Mezzi. But, you know, we're in that adjustment period. And I think that there are going to be matches that are slipped. But, you know, at the same time, it's just part of the process. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, I feel like, you know, from the outside looking in, that feels like a, a pretty solid sentiment. Um, that, yeah, it is going to take time and you can't really expect an immediate, uh, uh, I suppose, equalization of the same level or improvement or whatever. Um, I wanted to get your touch on, uh, I mentioned this a little bit, you know, when I have people on, um, the the packed schedule, especially at the moment, you know, outside of the player break, um, there's an awful lot going on you guys next week i think you've got the uh like uk and ireland closed qualifier for one of the blast qualifiers in it leads into this giraffe masters thing um there's the pinnacle fall series going on that i would imagine you're involved in in some way in between that you've got esca premier games you know um how do I you am four. yeah yeah very true very true yeah. i am full starting next week yeah yeah it's it's getting mad it's getting mad i mean um, yeah, so leading into that, how how do you deal, uh, I guess, as a player, maybe you could touch on as a team in general, um, but how do you deal with such a crazy schedule? Um, well, in in reality, you just got to deal with it. But, um, you know, you got to look at it as an opportunity because in some of those tournaments, we're going to be able to learn unbelievable things which will fix our team, which will, like, put us in the right direction. Like, you know, when you play official matches in comparison to 
practice matches you learn a lot more you know everyone when everyone's actually trying their hardest and you know trying to do everything correctly um you learn what works what doesn't work very fast and you make those alterations very fast uh so like you know in some of the tournaments it, it could be very tricky for us but in some others once we get some fixes for stuff you know i think we're going to be able to develop really fast i think i like i personally welcome it because I think it's great. Um, you know, on the bad side, you know, we could be like NA maybe, where they've got no tournaments. Yeah, I would rather true. have I'd rather have a packed schedule than no schedule. So like, but, you know, obviously they get things like ESEA cash cups, which give loads of ESL points, which is pretty outrageous. But, yeah. you know, it's unfair on the EU teams who play very good teams all the, all the while. And, you know, you've got American teams who are playing top 50 teams who are getting a lot of points. So it, help, it, it, struck, it makes it harder for EU teams to climb the ESL ranking, where, you know, obviously they invite teams straight to, you know, like the Cologne play-in, the Katowice play-in probably or whatever. You know, it makes it very difficult for, like, EU teams to just climb up if they're not qualifying for those Tier 1 events. But, yeah. I definitely think that the pack schedule, I'd rather have it over the not so packed. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you're a, a pretty good uh, proponent of that as well, you know. Um, I think your opinion holds a little bit more a little bit more weight than, than others, perhaps, uh, on that kind of thing. But yeah, I, I think it is curious, though, because there's some teams, um, I feel maybe like Ego is an example, where uh, they, they focus a lot on Premier and, and qualifiers and things, but don't take part in your you know summer sweet summer or it's like the full series now and the malta vibes that's just happened and stuff like that um so it's it's kind of curious like whether you know getting the reps in is uh, important or just pracking and scrimming and working on your individual level uh the philosophies within teams in that sense i think is is really cool uh to sort of look into so i, I do kind of like to ask the question especially at the moment because it does feel you know you go from nothing to like six tournaments in the same week that everyone's involved in you know so yeah kind of crazy kind of crazy uh but look thomas i think that i think that's gonna do is mate uh we we hit around to that 25 minute mark that's where i usually like to cut these off so once again thank you very much for coming on you've been very insightful giving us a little bit in into envy and of course the uh the end point the the previous and and of course the current version of so thanks very much thank you very much